Okay, this is about the third time that I have recorded myself. I forgot to hit record on the last one. So, welcome. We're going to be reviewing unit two. Um, if it looks like I haven't taken up too much time, we'll just jump right into unit three. Uh, unit two is going to be the cell cycle. So, what I'm going to draw whenever I think of a cell cycle, I think of like our life cycle, okay? We're growing, we're growing. We have a period where we're gonna have children, right? Or if you decide to have children, that's when you're gonna, there's a specific time period that you have that. Just like in cells, you have a specific time period in which you are going to replicate. Um, and that's gonna be during our mitosis phase. All right. The other part of the cycle is gonna be called interphase. So there's two types. There's only two places that, for right now, there's only two places your cell can be. Either an interphase or mitosis, all right? Interphase is gonna be divided into three parts. So we have G1, S, G2. G1 is gonna be our cell processes, conversion, cell transportation, that's where we're, unit three comes in. S phase is gonna be DNA synthesis, or what we call DNA replication. Let's jump in. So we have a DNA strand, beautiful. Our biomolecule, the most basic, the smallest molecule that makes up living organisms. Um, you have four options. You have carbs, proteins, lipids, or nucleic acids. Nucleic acids is what's going to generate and create genetic material. And nucleotides, which is one of the building blocks in creating this genetic material, is going to look like this. You have a house, you have a backyard over here, and you have a ribose group in our house, and then you have nitrogenous bases. All right. Um, notice that I said nitrogenous bases with a S at the end. So that means that there's different options for this specific part of the nucleotide. <coughs> Excuse me. We have adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. All right, so we have different types and it's just are different structures. And so how does that become a DNA structure? I'll show you. The phosphate group and the ribose are going to create that pretty outline that makes DNA. And the Nitrogenous bases are going to create the bridge. Oops. Right there. You guys are going to see why I'm doing it backwards. I've mistakenly done this too many times. So we read that. We always read genetic material five prime to three. Okay. Um, so we have another strand that's going to be complementary to these bases, and it is gonna go up, All right? So now we have three prime right there. We always read things five prime to three prime, right there. And we are gonna, that side also has nitrogenous bases, okay? It's still a nucleotide, just upside down. Um, if you're wondering why it's upside down, it's for stability, chemistry, um, right now, you don't need to know. But these nitrogenous bases, notice I left a gap between the two nitrogenous bases. That's because they're being held together by what we call hydrogen bonds. That one, pretend that one's being held together. This one, this one, this one. Forgot to add one. Woo. Okay, so. There's our DNA structure. It is happy and it is content, okay? Notice that they have different colors. So that's what we, so our nitrogenous bases are pairing together. They have specific, there's a specific rule. We have A and T that pair together, C and G that pair together. So on one side, you're gonna have A, T, C, T, just the sequence, these sequence are gonna, represent traits. Um, it's what gives me the brown hair, gives me five, seven height. Um, but the pairing is going to tell you what goes on the other side of the bridge. So you're gonna have, if A 
right here, here's our rule, A and T pair up together. So I'm gonna have T over here, A, G, A. So whenever you're given a problem that you need to list out, so we always read five prime and three prime, if you're given A, T, C, and T again, three prime, you finish with three prime, you're going to give the opposite strand. So notice here we have a three prime, opposite of the A is going to be T, opposite of the T is going to be A, we have G right here, A, and we're gonna finish off with the opposite of three, which is five. You did it, easy peasy. All right, you are always going to have the same amount of adenines to thymines at, and cytosines to guanine. So, with that being said, you guys can be given um, different percentages of how many guanines or adenines or what it, whichever nitrogenous base, and your task will be to figure out how much um, you have of the opposite nitrogenous base, okay? So if we have guanine that has 20%, that is found um, in the entire genetic DNA strand, you have, is made up of 20% guanine, you can assume, because they're paired together, you always need an equal amount, that you're gonna have 20% cytosine, all right? That makes up 40% of the DNA, of the uh, nitrogenous bases found in the DNA. Well, what does the other 60% represent? The, si the remaining 60 is gonna be the remaining adenine and thymine. And you know that they're gonna be equal in quantity, so you can divide 60 by, tw uh, by two, and you're gonna get 30%. All right, so back to our, so I've broken down our biomolecule nucleic acid. We're gonna come back over here to our S phase where DNA synthesis occurs, where genetic material is being duplicated, replicated, excuse me. All right, you are going to have proteins that come in and they break the hydrogen bonds. You're gonna have other proteins, they're gonna start attaching nitrogenous bases to those strands that are open, okay? And as a result, you are going to get, ooh, let's do a different color. You are going to get two genetically identical cells. Excuse me, there you go. One strand comes from the parent and one comes from the proteins that came in and attached. So that's gonna be the, a new strand they're both genetically identical, and that's what we call a semi-conservative replication. All right, to make sure that you have no issues with our, your nitrogenous base pairings, you're gonna have G2 check and make sure that ATs, A and Ts are together and then C and Gs are together. Once it says, gives you the green light and you're good to go, you're gonna move on to Mitosis, yay, so mitosis, it's not part of interphase, all right? It's separate, so you have interphase and mitosis. Now we're gonna talk about mitosis. You're gonna have four parts, okay? And this is going to be the separation of the cell into two daughter cells, what we call two daughter cells, that are genetically identical. All right, so how does that happen? You have different stages. You have prophase, where the cell its nucleus starts to disappear. I'm gonna use a lighter gray. Starts to disappear. Our DNA material actually condenses. So here's our DNA material. That, that's how we see DNA, right? It's gonna actually condense into what we call chromosomes, all right? They're gonna be tightly packed. You have a lot of genetic information. It needs to pack it. And you have this lovely biomolecule called proteins. Bio uh, proteins are gonna help the cell with cell processes, structure, function. 
So um, it's going to convert your, it's going to condense your genetic material into chromosomes, and we're going to put X's there to represent the chromosomes. You have spindle fibers forming, and their task eventually is going to be to move things around. So next phase is going to be mitosis. Mitosis is going to, wrong color, mitosis is going to take the chromosomes and it's going to line them up in the middle. So mitosis middle, okay? Our spindle fibers are going to attach to our chromosomes from each side. So the way I like to remember is prophase, metaphase, they're going to align in the middle. We have what well, the next part, which is anaphase. Ana, I like to think, so you actually spell like this, Ana. I like to think you have one A on either side of the N. And if you're using your hands to help you, you can use your mitosis. You're going to start to split your hands. And it's going to be pulling those chromosomes apart to opposite ends. So here's one, two, three, one, two, three. Let's use our red to represent our spindles. So they're going to be pulling to opposite ends. That's what we call polar ends, all right? Just like north and south polar off on our, are on opposite sides, our polar end, our chromosomes are going to go to opposite sides. Finally, we have telophase. Our nucleus are reappearing, okay? There's going to be a pinching right here in the middle to separate those, those two new cells now, all right? Our chromosomes are going to start condensing into DNA again. And cytokinesis is officially, you have two cells each with its own pair of genetic material that is identical. And that's the cell cycle. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Please email me. Do not hesitate. Um, I hope this helped and good luck on your review.